everybody, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We've reached episode 655. It's December 8th, it's 2021, and I'm Sebastian Beek. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Vance Bernberg. And you can subscribe to find out when we go live for events like this podcast recording session, which we're doing live, by the way. This is not pre-recorded. We're actually doing this live on the internet right now, youtube.com, live stream it. Uh, find out. It's pcper.com slash subscribe. Be there the next time we record one of these things and hear all the stuff that you don't get to hear in the finished version. Or join our Patreon, patreon.com slash pcper. You'll get the full uncut madness that is this recording session every week. I've been posting these... Uh, I'll throw up some updates, things like that. You can communicate with us there. Patreon.com slash PC per a special shout out to Steve this week. You know who you are. Fist bump Steve. Steve knows who he Ooh. is because Steve gave us a nice bump this week. Just wanted to call it out. You know, you don't have to just join. If you're already a member, throw in another dollar <laughs> or take a dollar <laughs> off. Change, <laughs> change your contribution. Just change it. It's Josh's turn. It's burger of the week. It's been weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks since I last had a burger. And so it was nice to uh, to get back there. All last week it was closed because of, of Guy Fieri was, was in town and filming there and getting all their specials and whatnot. And I, I had to go back and, and get the classic. Had to get the Hayfire, except they're out of pepper relish. So instead, I just added extra jalapenos. Fieri ruins it came everything, out man. I'm telling you. Dang near perfect. The fries were good, crispy, not soggy. Their their seasoning, whatever they do, is is fantastic. Their chipotle mayo uh, mixes nicely with the jalapenos and the uh, pepper jack cheese double patties. Perfectly done. I have no complaints whatsoever about this burger. It was great. I I avoided the salad on it. I ate you know some of that later after I finished the meal just because you know. Tomatoes and lettuce and onion on that would just, it would just, you know, just not good. But anyway, yeah, it was, it was a nice return to a classic after being away from a good burger for too long. Okay, moving on to news. And last week we had, we omitted something kind of important. I think it was kind of a same day story. We didn't get it in time. Snapdragon Tech Summit was last week. We reported on the new Snapdragon processor briefly. They haven't released a lot of details about it. You have to kind of jump through hoops to find out what the core count even is. But they had something else, which I think Jeremy perfectly described as perhaps the return of one of the greatest handheld consoles ever made. And no, I'm not talking about the Vita. I'm talking about the N-Gage. But it's not really an N-Gage product. It's it's a development platform wow. You know, it's kind of like this company that has a games distribution platform and has their own handheld coming out. It's like, uh, that's x86 based. Qualcomm's not going to be very happy about that. They're all about ARM. So they have this G3X handheld gaming platform that they want people to get excited about and start developing for. Is this anything more than just a fancy controller case for a smartphone? Uh, or, you know, a uh a, a switch that the controllers don't come off of. Yeah. The controller here in this picture looks exactly like a stretched out Xbox controller. Mm-hmm. Well, don't they all nowadays? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the Except same. Except they got the, the game and nipple uh, for the joysticks. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's a little bit better than... Yeah, it, there's not too many uh, cell phones out there with 120 hertz OLED screen. Uh, for hopefully the price that this is going to be around. Hmm. So you, at least you've sort of got that going for you. Uh, Can you make a call with it, though? Well, of course not, but the, that's why it's nailed You can't engage. awkwardly hold it against your head it to make no a phone mic. call. No, come on. Yeah. come on, headset, dudes. Well, I'm sure there'd be a wireless headset for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's got Bluetooth, then. Mm-hmm. So we're, oh, we're working with Razer on this. All right. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's probably where the, the switching and stuff is coming from. And oh, look, thumb buttons. Uh, apparently so these chips are for scale. Like yeah. this tiny <laughs> arm not, chip is not, powering this. Ma- how yeah. big is this thing? Well, there's a USB C yeah. port that gives you an idea. This is pretty big. Yeah, it's a fair size. It's amazing how few pads that uh, that actually has. Yeah. You know, with Intel going to 1700 with their CPU and 
AMD doing the same with their next generation and even their their current stuff, thirteen seventy seven, I think. Anyway, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I guess that is mobile though. So, what can mm. you do? I love this description. It has a screen in the middle with gaming controls oh. protruding downwards, protruding on the side. I mean, they do protrude. There's, you know, the buttons are are yeah. above the surface. And then the other thing, it's got a six thousand milliamp hour battery. So again, yeah, it, it it needs a bit of space to hide things in. I feel like it has to with 120 hertz refresh screen. I'm yeah, and it's still. I'm I don't think about, it'll last all that long. No, I'm worried about battery life here. Okay, yeah. the Adreno C- but, uh, GPU can handle 144 frames per second. It claims. Yep. Yeah. So. So a little bit more than the uh, thing. And then the other thing is that, of course, because everyone has to stream your games now, uh, what it's okay. using with that extra horsepower is that you'll be able to play the game on screen at the same time it's capturing and coding it and throwing it up to the, the uh, net. Wait, so you're going to live stream yourself gaming a streamed game from your handheld? Yes. It was like, But on the other hand, apparently how are you you've hold got... It so you get a good shot from the built-in camera. It's going to be nose cam. It's okay. going to be 100% nose cam. Okay. A Steam Deck, if you don't remember, has, I think it's only a 720p screen. Right? It, or maybe it's 800. It's 12, 1280 by 800, I think. Something like that, yeah. Low it's resolution. A weird one. Slightly higher resolution than the Switch, which is 720, but uh, still. I mean, they, they know that if they're actually processing it on the handheld device, it's better to have a lower resolution and playing games natively at a lower resolution or down, down sampling them always looks better than up sampling from a lower resolution unless you're using some kind of, you know, the modern up sampling technologies. But I don't know about this. I don't know about the screen resolution. Wait, what is the screen resolution? The webcam's 1080p. What is the display resolution? It just says a 120 uh, It's 120 hertz. hertz. Maybe this is lower <laughs> resolution. But it, they they sort is. of bounced around it like they're oh you can totally project uh, connect it to a 4K TV and play that way. Oh, okay, I wonder but, if this is uh, the same yeah we've got a screen on it. Okay, we, we've definitely got a screen on it. I yeah, I've scrolled through this article now completely and have not seen a sc- display resolution. I have to look that up. Well, it's not like they leave your, they actually had it to give to people to play mm-hmm. with either. This is kind of a Proof of concept. I don't think it's it's going to be available anytime soon. Oh, I see. It it supports up to 4K resolution according to their website. Yeah. Yes, if you're going to a an external display. Mesmerizing graphics. It says oh, true. Yes. 10 bit oh, it, HDR. There is so many details on this release. You you will just be blown away. Let's see specifications. Da, 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 da. CPU. CPU cores, Qualcomm Cryo CPU. That's all it says. It doesn't tell you how many. Yeah. 4K TV out. And this is going to be like 720p. So. Ooh, variable rate shading. No, wait. Where? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's oh. going to be ultra widescreen from the looks of it. 10 bit HDR. Unless I'm seeing something weird. But, 320 yeah. by 200 resolution. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen DOS games. Like this before. It's probably going to be Do like a remember? 1920 by 7 something. Do you remember when all the videos were 320 yeah. by 200? <laughs> yes. Can you, mm-hmm. I, I am pleased to discover. Steakandcheese.com. Did you ever go there? <laughs> no, 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 but I will now. <laughs> no, it's, it was, it was bad. The I think that, uh, okay, not going. Mm-hmm. I hope it's long gone. You know about Sorry. DRM, digital rights management, copy protection. Let's just call it what it is. Well, you know, 12th generation Intel had a bit of an issue with DRM out of the box, where the DRM programs were misinterpreting the efficiency cores, apparently, or not recognizing them and thinking that something nefarious was going on. So a bunch of games didn't So work. much for that unlocked tag. Yeah. So as I say here, you still can't buy DDR5, but DD- DRM issues are coming to an end. There's only three games on Microsoft, or it's not Microsoft, it's Intel's official list of games affected by DRM issue in 12th gen Intel core processors for Windows 11 and Windows 10 page. It's actually what it's called. I linked to it. So now it's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Fernbus Simulator, 
and Madden 22. Uh, obviously, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a bigger title. I'm not sure how popular Fern Bus Simulator is, though. Those Sounds three, crunchy. That's not Bus Simulator. No, Fern, Fern Bus? I know Bus Simulator. Is that, but, is that like Captain Planet's mode of transportation? Apparently no. something that ap- exists on the German Autobahn. Hmm. So you're having a mm. transit bus, but it's you're driving bus. on on the autobahn. Okay. So, you're doing craft well, work now, aren't you? It like sounds very important. You know? bus travel. <laughs> <laughs> the thing called a scroll lock workaround. What uh, motherboard vendors have been updating the system BIOS to support a quick shortcut. Hit the scroll lock button if you have the thing enabled, and it'll turn off the e cores. Dynamically placing them in standby when playing games, according to the literature. And anyhow, so that's that's the current state of Intel Alder Lake 12th Gen Core DRM issues nearly being resolved. They're working overtime, especially on that Fern Bus Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, we're uh, laughing. It's probably like the number 12 game in the they've world. They've sold thousands of them in yeah, Germany. Yeah. <laughs> it and Farming Simulator are in a neck-to-neck tie right now. I never would have like, guessed But that. if you really want bad, eighteen try Desert simulator. Bus. Truck Simulator. Desert Bus yeah. is the worst of the worst of them because, yeah, you're literally driving through a, a, a forever procedurally designed desert. Penn and Teller made oh, a yes, made yes. that simulator. That that and yeah. all it was is a straight road. But you're, every once in a while, your 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 bus would veer, and so you had to correct yes. it. But yeah, they, it was uh, Penn and Teller originally, and then it's turned into a whole charity drive. I don't know that they did it last year, but uh, Desert Bus for Hope is a thing. Dis- Discord says That's... Fern Bus coming in with mixed reviews off of Steam. So. Oh, okay. Well, because mm. of the DRM thing, everybody was buying all the new. Like they bought a Z six ninety board. They You're spent right about seventeen hundred dollars on yep. DDR five yep. on eBay. Yep. They got a thirty ninety for they literally like, killed $3, somebody for a thirty ninety. Yeah. Yep. And yep. then they get it all put together. They couldn't play it. Yep. And it's oh, are you kidding me? You know what, Microsoft? They love you. They're sorry. Mm. They'll never do it again. You can use whatever browser you want, honey. It's fine. You can you can have your browser back. Here, look at our look at our shiny new start menu. Don't worry about our anti-competitive. <laughs> <laughs> now you can do more pins and things, and more recommendations, yeah. or you can go to default. So, okay. yeah, well, technically they did make it a little bit better. They actually just made it so that you could add more cruft to it. But yeah, the the biggest thing, uh, which I I. I think Redmond just was totally shocked by this when they realized that a lot of people were upset that you could no longer just go into default apps and say, no, my web browser is now anything but edge, but you actually had to go down into the protocols and take HTML and HTML and, and HTTPS and everything manually one by one back to whichever browser that you would like it to have and not have it just automatically go to edge. Now, of course they're never going to, you know, randomly switch you back to Edge being your default browser ever again, uh, like, say, at the next update coming out in a week or two. Uh, but at least it's a little bit freaking easier to switch back because before that was just a little bit ridiculous to make you do it by protocol. So, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah. Except, and you still do get the little pop-up if you're using uh, a different web browser other than Edge to say, you know, Edge, it's built on the same technology as Chrome. You should switch to it. But I'm using Chrome, so... uh, Mm -hmm. But we have extra security features. Okay. Edge, it's just like Chrome, only slightly less compatible, and it confuses certain (laughs) websites that don't work properly. (laughs) Including Microsoft's own. Any more on that, or should we move on to exciting? I mean, I just want to keep talking about things other than graphics cards that we're never going to be able to buy. But no, 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 new. no, man. Oh, forget about breaking okay. news. Forget about the past. It's behind us. Okay, right. The past is in the rearview mirror of the bus yes. traveling through yes. the desert. The we bus. are on a journey of togetherness, of of healing. A new graphics card is coming from NVIDIA to save us all. I know you can't get your hands on GPUs right now, but 
What about a 3090 Ti? It's on oh, the launch gosh. schedule, according to videocards.com. Mm. They have received the very first embargo information about the new RTX 3090 Ti. And you know it's going to be I, I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to talk about the uh, 2060 12 gig. Uh, we'll just no. have to throw that on, because I don't know if it's on the list. Oh, now, okay. But we certainly have it's to not talk on about the list. that, too. All right, we'll talk about that next. I'll just next. click on the link on videocards.com. We're already here. This is right, the videocards.com okay. part of the podcast. All right. So 3090 Ti on the launch schedule. I'm sure it'll be ultra affordable. January 26, 6 a.m. Pacific. That's the on-shelf date, according to this very plain-looking table here with some censored description yeah. information. Let me let me ask Josh real quick. Yeah, how much room is left on that silicon to unlock to get from 3090 to 3090 Ti again? Mm, like, 5%? <laughs> that's that's probably generous. Yeah. Hey, but the memory, the memory total. What's the uh -huh. 3090 again? Is it 20? Was it 22? Or is it I, I thought it was 20. Remember. Oh, it's 24. Oh, jeez. Okay, uh, yeah, 24 makes sense. But look, the, oh, the TI yeah. could have much faster memory. It goes from 19.5 up to 21 gigabit oh, per second. Oh, my. Unlocking wow, the full potential of GDDR6X. That's definitely in that 5% zone. Actually, the, the core count increase going from 10,496 to 10,752. I mean, I'm not a math whiz, but that feels like less than... Five percent to me. Yeah, it does, but combined right. with that, what one point five ish? That, I mean, that's significant. That's a lot of memory bandwidth. Maybe two okay. percent. Let's go with two percent, shall we? Okay. Let's split, split the yeah. difference. I guess yeah. it's three. What's well, interesting to me is the uh, thirty eighty twelve, but actually the thirty seventy ti sixteen is. It's probably there yeah. to really compete with uh, AMD and the sixty eight hundred, which. You know, if you can get one of those at MSRP, you're you're sitting pretty. <laughs> yeah. 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 They are available at Josh highly is inflated prices. All right, let's let's just talk about this. There's a multiple announcements of this card. I'm just gonna show you the page here on video cards with press releases. It's not a rumor. It's not a leak. It's real. NVIDIA has actually brought back the RTX 2060 again, but this time with double the RAM. Instead of 6 gigs, like the card that's in the streaming PC that I'm using right now, it's 12. That's twice as much. Let's, let's, so, let's not call it a mining card, but, I mean, isn't that kind of what this is? Oh, gosh, yeah. Kind of, so, yeah. Let's look at the... Uh, well, no, absolutely not. They've sworn that they're not... Produce, they're not supporting the mining industry whatsoever. Well, and if it has the wait, LHR wait, wait. thing, do you, do you think that they it does? Did they go back and adjust the 2060 chip to include the LHR? I don't know. I doubt That's it. What an interesting question. So no, this is could very well be a a gift to miners. What I'm hearing about this is that the performance is lower than a 2060 super, which makes sense because the 2060 super is a 2070. So we're talking about something with 2176 CUDA cores. It's based on TU-106-300. I think that's exactly the same as the other one. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, yeah, more RAM. Yay. I don't I don't think it's for textures. I mean, you could well, put it could, textures I mean, in it. Yeah, 6 was not yeah. enough. So No, not anymore. 12 certainly should be for most things and certainly anything this can do. Well, that's not, it's not a bad thing. If I could buy this right now for $369. Three $369. I was, I was thinking was three thirty, three forty, but The original was okay. $329, I think. Yeah. So $399, I think, for the 2060 Super. So $379. Okay. Yeah, you got to kind of sit that in the middle. Not that it mm. matters in the slightest. No. We weren't sampled. I don't think anybody was really sampled this card. It's just it, it exists somewhere on the earth. Is it is it an actual RTX twenty sixty silicon? Twelve so. nanometer. Comparison. 
or is it uh, or is it just some kind of detuned RTX 3000 series? It's it's TU106, which according to Tech Power Ups database here. Oh, yeah, is. that's that's yeah. So that's the right chip. Yeah, yeah. That's Let's look at the cards nanometer. that use it chart. There's a lot. Now, see, there's another product that is the CMP40HX. That's a mining card. Only has 8 gigs. More shaders, though. 2,304. The 12 gigabyte version. Yeah, see, the original 2060 used the TU106-200. And this is the dash 300. So it has more CUDA cores. It went from 1920 to 2146 or 2176. So I'm I'm wrong. It'll be faster. It'll have faster like traditional raster based performance. It'll have probably better ray tracing performance. I wonder what the um if the TMU count is up. Uh, I don't remember how does that correspond with um RT cores or is that based on CUs? Not CUs. SMs. I need to stop. It's been too long you since do. a graphics card review. It has been. Yes. Well, they're depressing now, so we don't like doing them. Yeah, no, I think RTX cores are were, were, were kind of disjointed from, you know, that a bit. So, I don't know. I can't remember either. It's been too long. I mean, it's, it's what, four years since the RTX 2000 series? Yeah. Three. Well, no, you're right. Four years. The 2060 came yeah. out CES 2019, but the other stuff came out in 2018. You're right. Okay. Yeah, we'll and the that. RX before, which was, you know, the professional side, but essentially the same. It's still just GDDR6. It's not going to be 6X. It's not going to have yeah. a ton of memory bandwidth. It's it's fine. You can't buy it anyway. Yep. A 1080 Ti is still faster. <laughs> if you still have one of those, pat yourself on the back. You might want to hang on to it. Yeah. yeah it's just, well, you, ha- yeah, you have no choice. You have, there's nothing you're like this too. <laughs> <laughs> or turn around and sell it for an obscene amount of money. <laughs> or just not that we recommend happily that. game on it. Just be happy and game on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Be happy. Uh don't contribute to the problem. Unless you need money. I mean it's December. What if you need money for gifts? Sell your True. aging ten eighty TI and I know you should be giving it away this year. You can't even turn you should it be into giving a it as a gift twenty sixty. Right? Give it as uh, give it away in exchange for money. I think that's mm. Mm. Uh, money. Yeah. Mm. Ah, it's insanity it's pure insanity oh speaking of insanity can you believe that I, people i wondered yeah put a an ipad like a really big ipad pro on like a metal stand and then they they gallivant around <laughs> bragging about their beautiful new <laughs> apple computer it's like what are you talking about it's an ipad <laughs> This is an iPad. It has the oh. same SOC in it oh. as the current iPad Pro. What <laughs> no, is wrong with me. you? You but wound they me. insist. Like, no, it's a desktop computer. I swear. <laughs> they charged me $1,500, $1,600 for this thing. <laughs> and uh, then they try to hook up a monitor to it. It's like, it's got USB-C ports. Yeah, but they're not real. I mean, they're well, not real. It came USB-C. with a display. No. Why do you need another one? Well, I wanted a second display because I like two displays <laughs> in my desk. I didn't want to spend extra for the no. stand for the monitor. No. Yeah, Timmy, I mean the, Tim the stand Apple says for no. the only monitor they sell is a thousand. So, <laughs> and then the monitor itself is five. So yeah, not everybody has six grand for a secondary display to their fifteen hundred dollar all in one. And I, by the way, before even the M one nonsense, you couldn't hook up. And I know this from firsthand experience. You try hooking up a non Apple or LG ultra fine display to a Mac anyway, and it's it always looks a little fuzzy and crappy. Well, now we have a solution to the crap that is Apple's external display support. And it's called Better Dummy. <laughs> it's an open source tool. I don't know if everything... Is it open source or are they using some closed source magic to make this work? I don't remember. Jeremy. Uh, they didn't really explain too much other than it's open source and uh, MIT approved. Oh, okay. Uh, so they may well have borrowed some of uh, the stuff from them, but they're quite happy with it please explain the ridiculous hoops that you have to jump through in software to support (laughs) an external display resolution properly well essentially what you're doing is using this program to create a virtual display in software 
And then you're taking that virtual display and you're mirroring it to an actual physical display. So that instead of your 1440p being downsampled to some bizarre resolution, which is just so blurry you can't possibly read it, or uh, it's still trying to render your icons at the full 4K resolution, so they're about the size of a pinhead, this will actually let you choose a variety of resolutions and display them at a relatively reasonable <laughs> sharpness. Uh, at least he, someone figured out a solution, but you know, you think this if, was a problem that didn't need to exist. If you have a GPU that technically supports multiple displays, wouldn't it be better to have the GPU handle multi-display output than having to do it in software, which is robbing your CPU cycles and taking up additional resources to then mirror that out? I mean, it, it obviously if it works, it works. But at what point do you have to stop and think? Wait a minute, hold on. I've already given up x86 port other than emulated stuff that was Big Sur compatible, which means like signed 64-bit applications only, no 32-bit support, no native support for legacy applications whatsoever, no ability to emulate x86 outside of like DOSBox. Uh, so no running a VM with Windows in it unless it's Windows on ARM, which you can't even really legally do, but people do it anyway for whatever reason. I don't know why, because they hate themselves. And they don't want to run the... Wow. Apple, like Ooh. Microsoft Office for Mac, because it sucks. So they want to run Office for ARM, I guess. So anyway, if you if you're They're practicing that, for when they can do it, you're <laughs> so in love with Apple that you make all these sacrifices to use their current platform, and you even run your external display in software and mirror it out because that's better than just switching to any PC in the world. And just having native support for stuff like having more than one monitor hooked up. You guys suck. I'm going home. Jeremy, tell us about Yo uh, YouTube and Roku. I didn't know there was an issue no. with, with it. Okay. Well, you wrote the article. <laughs> How did, oh, really? You didn't know this. Okay, so uh, whatever you want to call them, YouTube, Google, Alphabet, they're pissy because Roku seems to more or less have the monopoly on streaming devices in North America. Uh, Roku is more or less holding up a mirror uh, at Google <laughs> and the whole YouTube thing. So there was this big, huge fight where first off, uh, YouTube TV as an app was removed from Roku streaming devices a while back. But as of earlier today, YouTube would no longer be available on Roku devices. Google was a little bit pissed that, uh, well, there were two things. One, they demanded that Roku start displaying YouTube TV ads on part of their, just their built-in display. Cause you pick up a TV, a lot of them are Roku now. So you'd bring up your menu and there'd be an ad to click on YouTube TV. Roku kind of pointed out the wall. There's a lot of other streaming options out there and you're not demanding that of any of them. Uh, to which Google just sort of said, you know, talk to the hand. But the other thing is that Roku likes H.265. It works really well with cheap, dedicated hardware encoders. Google, on the other hand, likes AV1. Uh, AV1 doesn't quite work so well uh, on just a pure hardware encoder. It, it wants a little bit more beef uh, to be able to do things. So Roku is a little bit annoyed because the, the, they're suggesting that Google is more or less saying that they're going to dictate what kind of hardware they need to put in their next generation stuff to be able to support YouTube. Well, earlier today or last night, they backed off. And so today you'll still be able to get YouTube on your Roku device. And both sides realize that uh, this is, there's not going to be a single consumer out there that will feel compassion towards either side of this fight. But on the other hand, uh, the announcement from Roku didn't go into details as to what they're going to do. If you're going to start looking at some of the better 4K and 8K streams that YouTube is going to start coming out with, it's not going to be H.265 H compatible. You're going to need to use AV1. So the question is, is Roku going to sort of split off their product line a little bit more so that you've got the Ultra HD and just the HD version? Or are they just going to say, you know what? For H.265, 4K is good enough for anyone on YouTube, which we agree with because you, 
as we said before, you don't want to see us in 8K. It, it's just going yeah. to ruin whatever respect you have for us, assuming you still have any left. So yeah, this was going to be a huge problem for a lot of people, most of whom would have never known the news other than to wake up in the morning and realize they can't watch their YouTubes anymore on their TVs. So we'll see how this goes. I can't imagine Google ever walking away from all the ad revenue they get from YouTube. And, well, and Roku yeah. is the biggest streaming uh, hardware device. Right. It was, just, it was yeah. a bluster. There was no way they were going to actually carry that out. No. It's like, oh, suddenly we've lost 60% of our living room traffic. I don't think uh, so. Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't do it. Well, all right. except for all those Apple TV users. Right. There's quite a few of them, but I think the Roku is far more. Way, uh, way, way more. Uh, it is. How yeah. about, how about some right. quick quick hits? Yeah, let's look at some games real quick. Jeremy, you have there's a few on the list. What's this about uh, Warhammer? Is this an expansion? Uh, a well, sequel? yes, but it's also a standalone game. Okay. Creative Assembly put out Warhammer 1, and then when they put out Warhammer 2, all they did was bolt it on to the side of the Warhammer 1. But at the same time, you could play it separately. The third incarnation will be the exact same. Uh, except it's on the other side of the map where no one's ever actually been and survived, where there's ogres and daemons and Cathay and all sorts of un- interesting things. But they've been teasing the various races you're going to be able to play. And today it was Slanish, the uh, daemon goddess, god, uh, hermaphrodite type being of excess. Be it pain, pleasure, whatever it is you got, give Slanesh more and, and keep on giving. So it's. It's it's going to be interesting. The, 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 they've had to expand a lot of the uh, game mechanics to make this more interesting. So in this case, uh, as opposed to you know threatening uh, other uh, factions into becoming your vassal, you can seduce them. Uh, you'll be able to gift uh, enemy commanders with uh, certain things that might make them a little less effective, although they might enjoy getting them. And uh, there's also you're some talking STDs. About, uh, oh yeah, like, you're talking about snoo okay. snoo. And that's a little bit Nurgle, but at the same <laughs> snoo, time, snoo, snoo. death by snoo snoo. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, yeah. we we're definitely talking death by snoo snoo. <clears throat> okay. I all right. You yeah. may have heard about something called Halo Infinite. That's also on this list of of games that have just been released uh, today. Apparently, not that well reviewed so far. It's just the trend. You can't have a game come out and everybody's happy and it actually works properly. That's the Battlefield it's 2042 this trend. Current year. <laughs> Our second oh. says Halo Infinite's campaign finishes the fight but arrives in tatters, marred by serious technical issues. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've hey. not played it yet. <sighs> I was looking forward to, to playing this one too. And uh, I don't know. They say that it fits neatly with the original intent of. They say that 343 Industries really got put their own stamp on it. it. It really meets with all of the original feels of the earliest games. But yeah, like like they said, marred by strange issues. Mm. I was well, kind of looking a forward patch to it. Or two away, perhaps. Yeah, I probably wait a couple months, then I'll I'll probably go get it. Yeah. A little disappointing, so read the article on that one. It's one of those things where it's not hard in this industry to get a game <clears> code <throat> and check these things out, mm-hmm. either right when they come out or early. But That article has, has uh, spoilers in it, so yeah. beware. And that was published back on the 6th, so they had it early for review. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh. Is this a pick of the week, or is this a games thing? What is this uh, Humble it's Bundle both. thing? <laughs> is this your pick? <clears throat> no, no, but it's a good pick. I, Jeremy retitled it, actually. His title was better. I'll have him talk about uh, it. Okay. Well, it's the Holy Bat Bundle. <laughs> How many bat Holy games do you get for one bat price? <laughs> a lot. Well, Robin, uh, <laughs> you're not going to believe the uh, value shnikes, of this. Holy shnikes, Batman. $10 for these eight titles? It's. I believe it's pay what, you, pay what you want on this. Oh, okay. But I thought there was usually yeah. a threshold. What does it say here? Uh, Mike, there's a two, uh, ten bucks five, for eight. eight item bundle. Yep. You have to pay at least ten to get eight. At least ten. But yeah, By the way, at, uh, don't this. get, don't and remember, play. It is the gift of money that is the true 
value no. of this bundle. These Lego Batman games are an exercise in pain and frustration. When you want your son to play something so that you can get some work done, and then he's constantly asking you for help because the objective is unclear, the game mechanics are <sighs> bizarre and terrible, don't do it. And the handheld ones are even worse. Hey, on the plus side, it's still cheaper than the Lego set. It's true. And you can't That's hurt true. your foot on it. Yeah. Uh, in mm-hmm. the dark. But the other ones, like the Arkham Asylum, and these go on sale for very low prices from time to time on various platforms, but to get all of them for 10 bucks, just be done with it. And play them on the correct platform. The personal computer platform. We understood that. Yes. P... C. Yes. But yeah, 10 okay. bucks for eight games. Pretty good. The, the last... You definitely yeah. sit your kids in front of, too. Sorry. It's okay. That's the a buck 25 a game. game. Mm-hmm. Am I looking at the right thing? Math. What What is um, Stanley Parable What is the Deluxe? Stanley Parable? That's oh my question. gosh, you've never played the Stanley no, Parable? I have not. Are these point-and-click uh, mystery <clears throat> adventure uh, type games, or...? It's um no. It's a unique experience. Okay. Well, they've been unique? promising well, it's it's unique. Uh they've been promising an update that this particular update would come out in twenty nineteen. I'm sorry, did I say twenty nineteen? I meant twenty twenty. Did I say twenty twenty? I meant I meant twenty twenty one. No twenty nineteen. No, no, twenty twenty two. I think they mean it this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Delay. Oh, um, I see they're they're kind of making fun of this. I yeah. See. So far, the yeah. artwork is reminiscent of Monty Python. So uh, I was gonna say it's, it's not really Monty Python ask. It's oh, I see. more. It looks like um, uh, crap. Maybe ADR. Black Mirror. Well, yeah, it's more like Black or, or Black Mesa. Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Yeah, Little Brazil. It's like the Office version of Black Mesa. Yeah, but, you st- but Terry Gilliam still. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just helping you out here, Sebastian. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah, what, it's content what can complete. It's preparing for yeah. release. Just about it's every just platform couple. has given away the Stanley Parable for free, so yeah. okay. it, it's your fault if you don't have it at this point. Really. Yeah, it, it, and you haven't played it through to all the endings that are possible. Hmm. So it's like a visual yeah. novel? Hmm. Is that what you're talking about? It's, um, That's closer. It's, but... it's a way to pass some time while you click <laughs> buttons. Good they lord, it sounds exactly a like a space. visual novel. All right. It's not. It's, I'm never it tells a bored. story. Check it, out. it tells a story. Wait, you're desperately bored sometimes? Uh, no, I said yeah. if I ever am. Yeah, yeah. no. I, this I, would, that's this never would be, happened to me in years. This would be engaging. Engaging? Yeah. Well, Is no. it handheld? Is that what you're saying? Is that a handheld no. a, with a cult following? No, it's, it's kind of interesting. interesting. If you haven't played it, these sort of bizarre little self-contained games then you should probably go yeah. try one you should you could play it for six hours or 15 minutes it depends i reviewed a case it's from silverstone it is called the alta g1m the m designates micro atx it does not support atx motherboards it supports micro atx and itx it only supports sfx and sfxl power supplies however unlike the last small form factor case from silverstone try to wrap your head around this I last reviewed the Silverstone Sugo, I think it's pronounced Sugo, 15, which was a small mini ATX cube-like case that took full-size ATX power supplies. Now we have a micro ATX that only supports SFX power supplies. What is happening? As you can see from this first picture, there's a huge gap at the bottom. That's where the air intake comes in. This is really just the reinvention of the Fortress FT-03, which you may know it's this small footprint but tall case. This case is a little under 8 inches wide, about 12 inches deep, and it's 20 inches high. There it is on a desk. This very desk that I'm sitting at, as a matter of fact, which is really an IKEA table. And as you can see from those three shiny fans on the vented side panel, this has support for up to a 360 degree radiator in it. That's the big difference between this and the old Fortress case, is that that one only had 120 millimeter support and this one goes all the way up to 360 if you so choose and i'll just give you a brief tour of the outside of it it's all vented on all sides except for one it does have one plain metal side which is you know where the uh motherboard mounts 
Yeah. Well, no, that's the other side, that's, which also vented. Oh. Because when you put it together, and this is rotated. This is 90 degree rotation. Silverstone likes that. Their fortress cases, the Raven cases, they all have that rotated look. So even though if you look at it from, say, the back, this is actually the top. So your rear I.O. is actually up top, just like that LDO3 case that we looked at a year ago. Uh, if you open it up, this is what you're presented with. This bracket, that is your hard drive and cooling radiator bracket. So if you choose the build I did, which was to use a 360 millimeter rad, because they sent a 360 millimeter cooler with this, then you don't have storage support anymore, other than the M.2 slots on your board. Or unless you get creative. And there's some space behind the motherboard you could throw out. SSD what what if you get perpendicular? What if you get trapezoidal? Oh, well, at least perpendicular has a song that goes oh, with it. okay. I had get one issue. Because the, the nice thing about these cases is that they're, because the GPU hangs from the top like a bat, you can fit a really long GPU in a 20-inch tall case. However, I had this weird mm-hmm. issue where one of the motherboards I used, I used two boards when I was playing around with this, was a little bit thinner than the other, and the GPU was sitting on the metal below the motherboard tray, which I thought was odd. But the mm. other motherboard I used that apparently had a thicker PCB did not have this issue. We're talking about less than a millimeter here, but that's just something to bear in mind. I ended up grabbing a shorter GPU to finish it with my thinner board so I wouldn't have the GPU sitting on the case directly. But... That could have just been like a weird, like maybe the thing was bent and I didn't even notice it. There was a just that's a rat's nest. Rats, yes, it's a rat's nest. Yeah, and it went from that to this to shoving it in. <laughs> now, yeah, I realized after I built this that I should have put the fans on the inside of the radiator. And I'll talk about why shortly, because these fans, that way uh, that way they can they could catch all those wires. Well, that's why I didn't do it, but. I should have done a better job of cable management. Here it is before I shove it in. I had the system running to make sure it worked before I put it all together. Um, nice hammock. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the When you actually close the outer panel, like you saw in that picture up here, the fans themselves are right up against the side panel, which sounds fine, but that it's hard to see in this picture, but... There is an integrated filter behind all of those vent holes. And so that is right, not touching, but right up against the fan. There was this hissing sound whenever the fans were spinning up because it was just so close and there's enough resistance from that screen that I think it impedes airflow a little bit. Hmm. So as I mentioned in the testing portion, I did have a little bit higher thermals than I was expecting considering all those vents because in an open test bed like just on the table here the CPU had a delta this is a 9900k but with the limits enforced it's actually reasonable it went up 12.8 degrees inside versus outside the case so like when it was outside the case the GPU was fine because there's great airflow from the bottom to the top in this thing. There's a 180 millimeter fan in the bottom of the case, blowing straight up across your GPU out the top, and that works great. That always worked great in the Fortress cases, like my old FT02. You could air cool and overclock to your heart's content with those things. So I I would use an air cooler in this. Is the upshot? Use an air cooler on your CPU. Take advantage of that great airflow from the bottom. Don't use a rad like I did, or at least put the fans on the inside. I think if the fans were on the inside, then maybe I don't know. Maybe it would work better if the radiator was up against the side. I sort of miss that great glow show. Still be some fans. Yeah, and it's pushing through the rad, too. I know. It's it's not ideal. Just don't use a radiator with this. I do really like the polish of this case. Every little detail, like the cutout for the power supply power plug is centered in the back. And even though the power supply, normally the power cord would be coming out the, the side, they have a little cable that reroutes it to the center of the back. The top is really nicely done. You have a rubber grommeted exit for all of your like display and USB cables out the top. It's hard to see here, but there's a little clip that helps organize the cables before they go out the grommeted opening, so it puts less stress on it. It's just, in general, the, the what's touches the price of this? were interesting. Uh, the, the price, 169 Huh, I would have put it closer to 200 
No, I mean it's we're talking just steel and plastic here, and doesn't it comes oh, come with on, one like fan? The self-assembled ones are two hundred bucks now. Here they have their. <laughs> this is the, the the glamour shot, and you, as you can see, the FTO three is on the wall. It's beloved family member. Yeah, but it's already selling for less. I saw it on on Amazon for one fifty two, so it's it's more reasonable. But then oh. I was like, the hmm. Suko fifteen that was one sixty nine, but that's crept up to one ninety seven. So. Uh, the Sugo 15, by the way, not only does it support full-length graphics cards in a smaller overall package, even though it has a bigger footprint, it has way better storage support. There's like multiple 2.5-inch SSD um, mounts that you can use even if you're using a 240 millimeter RAT in that case. So if you absolutely have to have a 360 RAD, even though the performance isn't that great because the airflow is just, it's not set up for the side mounted rad like that it's set up for something mm-hmm. up top so anyway i gave it the silver because there's a couple drawbacks here i don't like having to be forced to use an sfx when it's bigger than their mini itx that uses full-size atx power supplies so silverstone i love how they always have there's so many options in their lineup they have a huge lineup of cases so this this might fit your very particular needs if you're like, look, I have a table this size, I have a small apartment, I cannot have any bigger footprint than 8 by 12 Well, here you go. Now you have a 20-inch tall case. Stack it up, put stuff in it, mm-hmm. use an air cooler, though. You'll have better temps. Stack the it up. The form factor reminds me of the Fantech Shift Air 2 that I reviewed about a few months ago. And I got a triple slot uh, 2080 Ti, uh, two and a half, the, that, that Asus one about a two and a half card slot, but it wouldn't take more than a 120 AIO. I think it was smaller case though, but vertical oriented. It was a very attractive case. I, I did like the form factor uh, so, quite a lot actually, um, but it, it didn't have as many choices from a motherboard perspective. You can only get the, the ITX board in it, um, but it was a great looking case and it had really nice flow, airflow right across it and, and up through it. And it was a the out, um, all the outputs for the motherboard were at the top as well, so kind of a the same deal with everything coming out the back and down the down the side. It's tucked underneath the rear panel though, so it's, it came out the bottom, but it was you know started at the top, then got it tucked underneath the panel and okay. came out the bottom. Yeah, it had a trough in the inside. But the thing is, I don't know if either of these cases could fit the world's greatest graphics card, which I can't believe didn't make the list. What's that? Voodoo 5? Noctua released. Oh, Lord. A 3070. It's oh, I, I got a lot of attention lately. Skip this. <laughs> it could, I, so could either of your cases fit a 4.3 slot GPU? No. No. <laughs> See? No, no, I'm just... Who cares anymore? I guess. Because really, if you can't fit a 4.3 slot <laughs> GPU... <laughs> You're bragging on the with brown. With your case stands on it that you can take out and replace with whatever fans you like. Oh, there's, there's it, get a nice side shot. It makes me sad that. that Noctua is embracing all the more their, like you know, generic black, gray, silver color schemes for fans and coolers. There's a new air. Oh no, no Chromax so. version for this. This is just well, screw the Chromax version. Brown I want the, the best proper way. brown. Yeah. That's just gross. I like it. It's beautiful. But it does. It's reminiscent of something. That, that all that. It's, it's so hideous. Taste. It's gorgeous. Two round brown piles. <laughs> it looks like. But look, you can literally unscrew that fan shroud and replace them with whatever 120 mil fans you would like, if does you it wanted to. You of walking you know, the desecrate dog? it. All right, it's time for picks of the week. No, it's not. You know, inland, uh, they've been making some inexpensive, but reasonable ssds i've I've heard very few real negative reviews about them i mean they're not fancy they're not the fastest but they're they're reasonably priced and and they're solid performers now with this one it's it's kind of interesting because for 250 bucks you get a two terabyte gen well the first generation of the of pcia 4.0 type drive so you got five gigabytes per second reads and 4.3 gigabyte per second writes but for a non-black friday price for two terabytes for 250 i mean it's only 50 dollars more expensive than uh, pca 3.0 stuff that you know 
it's going to be 20% slower than, uh, than this. And so it's a, it's a nice little choice for those on a budget who want to have a either faster, you know, OS drive or a faster little gaming drive. Um, it's oh. not unreasonable. Okay. Hold yeah. On. And with oh, the heat sink, it's $10 less. Yeah, oh, if you wait, do the 40, forty dollar coupon. What is that like? Thirteen cents a gigabyte. Save an extra forty dollars when you do this. So yeah, two twenty nine for mm. a for a a reasonably fast two terabyte PCA four point oh. Well, anyway, moving along. Yes, Jeremy, what is your pick this week? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> like Brett. All wait, right, Jeremy, so do you have one? You, it's you mining. should do mine next. Actually. Mining? Yeah, actually, no. Yeah, but do his first. Because he wants to mine yeah, first. I think, no, yeah, let's do Jeremy's last. Go for it, Brett. Let, let me go. The reason I wanted to go is because I'll well, let Sebastian catch up on the. Well, when you need to go, you need to go. No, it's, I mean, you yeah. go, Brett. Okay, this is the Western Digital SN 750 NVMe 4.0 interface, one terabyte, exactly half the capacity of what Josh's pick was for under $100. $99. That's a good price. Damn good price, if I might say. That's Gen three. The, uh, wait, it's, it's, no, it's Gen four. It's Gen four. It's Gen four. Just a little bit faster than Gen three, though. It is. You can tell. Oh, it's SN seven hundred and fifty SE. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it's not not going to be very much faster, but uh, yeah. It, it isn't. But it's a Gen. It's a Gen four interface. So, okay. Enough terabyte. of the Gen four. It's thirty six hundred megs per second max. Yes. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't necessarily super qualify, but it is under the magic one hundred dollars for a terabyte. Well, hey, it's it's that. also compatible with Gen three. So if you don't have it a is. Gen four, you know, what is this connector in the back? And it doesn't come with a. That's it. It's a little bizarre. It doesn't come with a fancy heat sink. It doesn't need Maybe one. It does this looks like a dramless drive. There's a controller. There's NAND. Maybe the controller's Scroll on down. the back. and that's... This looks like the this is just a rebranding of the WD Blue with maybe slightly better performance. It might be, because it does have a Gen 4 interface. Okay, enough of the Gen 4 interface. It has a Gen 4 interface. Okay. <laughs> and look, you can use their fancy black, um, the WD Black software suite. Well, only if you use French. Anyway, pretty darn good price. For a terabyte of NVMe storage. Yeah, I mean, if you at, want a terabyte of slow uh, NVMe SSD, that not, is where it is at. Thirty six hundred is. I don't know what they're. I don't know how. Okay, it is significantly it faster than the blue. I'm being a jerk. Here's the blue. It's eighty three dollars before you save an extra yep. five dollars when you apply this coupon, and it's only up to twenty four hundred because that was a pretty slow. Right. QLC DRAMless drive. So although this one is fairly inexpensive as well. The, the the black drives are usually cut above the blues. So Yes, I remember that from the that hard drive holds. era, Brett. Yes, where the black so cost more mm, because yes. better. Yes. So the black NVMe is still a little better, thirty six hundred. Doesn't it's not terrible. You could probably do better, but under a hundred dollars. That's the magic price point for a terabyte. I like it. All right. Jeremy, finally. Do you like it? Do I like what? Yes. Mining? No. <laughs> Justify ah, yourself. Explain yourself. Th this is good urban mining. So we've all seen the giant mountains of electronic waste uh, in countries other than North America that we all just sort of ship it off to and we ignore the fact that there's kids trying to use uh, various acids to extract some of the valuable uh, metals from the motherboards and phones and everything that we toss out. So this has actually been an interesting breakthrough recently using flash jewel heating. Uh, and so essentially what that is, is that instead of trying to use a chemical reaction to free the valuable metals out of a substrate or a motherboard, they're heating it up to like 334 3,400 Kelvin in like less than a second in a vac vacuum chamber. So a lot of the, the really valuable and rare stuff like the, the cadmium and the mercury and the gold, it's got a, they've got different evaporation temperatures. So by doing this quick little bang, you get all of these various uh, vapors being separated into different cold traps and 
instead of, you know, dealing with giant vats of acid, uh, which, you know, to get your odinium out aren't exactly environmentally friendly either. In this case, you just have to spend a, an immense amount of energy to get a vacuum chamber and a flash heater. But it, it's actually a much better way uh, to recover a lot of the metals that we just sort of toss out because, oh, look, it's a new phone. That's, that one's just garbage now. And like, honestly, we're, some of these rare metals are very well named. Um, they're kind of rare and easy to get to places. So being able to reclaim these is actually a very big thing. And to see, you know, uh, someone actually working on getting this out and first off, stopping them from getting into the environment. Second off, you know, not forcing kids to do that sort of thing with giant vats of acid. And third off, to be able to recover them in a useful condition where they can actually be presented to a company to be able to make the next generation of stuff with recycled metals is actually kind of a big thing. Uh, and it's also used for a bunch of other things like uh, they can do it for soil to get a bunch of the lead and stuff out. So it's, it, this was actually kind of interesting when I saw it. And I mean, the fact that I could say that, you know, mining is good is, is fairly rare. So yeah, I, I, I kind of like the, this whole idea and I hope that uh, we can find a, a relatively good, good way uh, to implement it because I one of the things I said was that per ton of e-waste processed is about 939 kilowatt hours but the thing is that commercial smelting furnaces is more like 90,000 kilowatt hours so yeah it's still energy intensive but comparatively nowhere near the same ballpark so hey and you know it beats sifting through the side of the road to gather gold from catalytic converters, doesn't it? <laughs> That's really popular around here, so don't knock it. Hey, it used to be a thing. Guess. It's still a thing. Yeah, for sure. Oh, we pretty much emptied about a canon of that. Uh, there were some <laughs> very effective people doing that. I just wonder, how do you unload these things? Isn't it obvious what's going on when you bring in this pile of catalytic converters and just Oh, no, no, I'm literally talking about the gold that is taken out by the reaction with the lead oh, and deposited on the side of the road. Oh, there, there are literally ways wait, you can were... sift for gold on the wow. side of roads. Yes. Huh. That's incredible. You ain't going to get rich, but, well, you might get a little bit more out of it than you put in. If you don't mind monotony. Speaking of monotony, we'll be back next week to do this all over again. <laughs> Speaking of monotony. God willing. <laughs> <laughs> or forbid. I don't know. It's probably some people like this, and we're gonna keep yeah. doing it until nobody watches or listens anymore. And then so, we're gonna do it twice as much just to punish yeah. you. Yeah. Then, not then we'll double up our efforts. Let's <laughs> just redouble our efforts. We'll, we'll, yeah. Don't beat the dead horse. Well, until next week. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And uh, have a great week. Thanks.